Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the math problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the math problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain almost the same problems in most cases and appearing again in most cases on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions have not gone away. They are still a big part of the exam. They have not gone away, as I, as I said. They have not disappeared in the re revised GRE. They are still a big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us enough practice questions on quantitative comparison question. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving some problems from this book. Today is our 51st day. Right now, we are on page number 327. Please turn to it, page number 327, problem number one, the very first problem. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here is what the problem says. It says that the store bought an item for $9 a piece. So there is a store, they bought a certain item for $9 a piece. They turned around and they sold that item. They sold each of these items, we are told, at 20% markup. What we are being asked to compare is the selling price of the item versus $10.80. This problem, when it appeared, 88% of the people had no trouble with it. 12% did actually have some, some difficulty with it. I'm going to say it one more time, then I'm going to get out of here. I want, I want you to do it yourself. Pause the video, solve the problem yourself each time before you continue watching the solutions, before, before, before you so look at the solutions that you and I are going to do together. Do you understand? So one more time, they bought it for $9, they are selling it 20% markup. How does the selling price compare to $10.80? I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video so that you can solve it yourself. Here we go. We are told that the, that the store bought the thing, they bought it for $9, so they paid $9 for it and then they sold it at 20% markup, 20% markup, 10%, 10% of $9 is 90 cents, another 10% is another 90 cents, so that's your 20% markup, that's 10%, that's 10%, 10% of $9, and 10% of $9, again, is 90 cents. We just add them up, this is 10% markup, this is another 10% markup, that's 20%. So of course that's $1.80, $1.80 plus 9 is going to be $10.80, $10.80, same as that guy, the answer is C. The answer is C. Number two. Question number two. All right. In question number two, we are being told that question number two, the percentile was 83%. We are being told that N plus 2 over 5 equals 5 plus 7 fifth. And what we are being asked to compare in column A, N versus column B, which is 6 and 4 fifth. One more time, the two quantities that we are being asked to compare are N and 6 and 4 fifth. What we are being told is that N plus 2 fifth equals 5 plus 7 fifth. I'll give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself first. Well, here we go. The quickest, the simplest, the, 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 the most economical solution to this thing is simply break this up right away. Five, seven fifth can be written as five fifth plus two fifth. Five, piece, five, piece, five fifth plus two fifth is your seven fifth. But five fifth, as we know, five fifth is just one. So it's five plus one plus two fifth. Five plus one. 5 plus 1 is 6. 5 plus 1 is 6. So this boils down to this boils down to 6 and 2 fifth. 6 plus 2 fifth. 6 plus 
2 fifth, which we are told is same as 2 fifth plus n. Now we, what we have here is n plus 2 fifth, n plus 2 fifth equals 6 plus 2 fifth, therefore n must be 6. The residue is 6 and then 2 fifth equals 2 fifth. n equals 6. n equals 6 which is less than 6 and 4, six and four quarters. The answer is b. Because we're comparing six versus six and four quarters, a uh, uh, four fifth rather. Number three. Problem number three. Problem number three. For some reason, I did not put down the percentile. Just give me one brief second. I will write it down in the pens myself. It here is eighty-one percent. Problem three was uh, gotten right by 81%, 19% missed it. What we, are being to what we are being told is that x is less than 0. x is less than 0. What we, what we are being asked to compare are two quantities. In column A we have x minus 1. In column B we have 1 minus x. All right. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do, it, do the problem yourself first. Always a good idea to do it yourself first. All right, here we go. We know that x, we are told that x is less than one, which is same as saying that x is negative. x is a negative quantity because it is less than zero. Not less than one rather, I meant to say less than zero. Since x is less than zero, which means x is a negative quantity. So this x here is a negative quantity minus one, which means this entire thing is going to be negative. Similarly here we have one, which is positive, minus a negative quantity. One, which is a positive quantity, minus x, which is a negative quantity. So some positive quantity minus some negative quantity, which is going to end up being a positive quantity. And therefore positive quantity is more than negative quantity, the answer is b. So that's one way of doing it. Another way to do this, this problem is to simply plug in numbers. You could plug in numbers also, it's not that bad. Let's do, let's do it with plugging in numbers. If you want to plug in numbers, here we go. It's very simple, very straightforward. We are told that x is less than 0. Let's pretend that x is negative 5. Plug in anything, anything that you want less than 0. I'm going to put in negative 5. So here we have negative 5 minus 1, which is negative 6. And here we're going to have 1 minus a negative 5. You see, which is why this quantity becomes positive, negative and negative becomes positive, and this is positive, we get a positive quantity, which is what we have here. 1 plus a 5, 1 plus a 5 is a positive 6, and of course, positive 6, of course, is going to be greater than negative 6. So that's another way of doing it. Answer, of course, is B. Let's move on to the next one, number 4. A thought just occurs to me. If you like, I can actually show you one more way, more of a theoretical way, more of an abstract way, more of an algebraic way. And the algebraic way, if you're curious, this is how you would do it algebraically. Since, since the thought comes to my mind, why not, why, not, why not do it? Let's add x to both sides. When we add x to both sides, this x goes away and this becomes 2x. You with me? Let's add 1 to both columns. When we add 1 to both columns, this becomes 2. Okay, we could, we could compare right here because we know x is negative. x is negative, 2 times x is negative. This is going to be negative some quantity, this is going to be 2. But if you, don't want to go, if you don't want to stop here, we could go one more step, divide both columns by 2. When we divide both columns by 2, what we're comparing is that, what, we, what we're comparing is that x versus 1. When we divide both columns by 2, when we divide both columns by 2, 2 goes away, and what we're comparing is x versus 1. And x versus 1, given the fact that x is a negative quantity, x is less than 0, therefore x is going to be less than 1 x is going to be less than 1. So that's more of an algebraic way of doing it, without plugging in numbers, without uh, looking at the signs. Do you understand? Number 4. Question number 4. Question number 4, we are given a geometric figure here. I'm going to reproduce here on the blackboard, exactly as it appears in the exam. So we'll go from there. It looks like this. The picture that is given to us looks like this. That's all that is given. Nothing else. They give us nothing else at all. That's the, that's the picture that they give us. And the question is, 
This is number four. And 84% of the people had no trouble with it. Column A, we've been asked to compare total number of triangles shown above. Total number of triangles shown, ab shown, shown above, above being this figure, you understand? The picture appears above the question. And here's our column B. Column B, we have six. So six versus total number of triangles that are shown in this picture. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself, okay? Do it yourself first and then we'll do it together. Okay, here we go. In something like this, when they give us a picture like that, it's always a good idea. It makes it makes our work easier. It makes it easier to keep our thought process. It keeps to keep our thought organized. If we name this these points, these points should be given a name. Notice I did not say vertices. These are not vertices only because this is not a vertex, and that is not a vertex. So we're going to give every intersection a name. This is not a vertex, but 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 you're going to give them a name so that we can identify the triangles that as we locate them. Do you understand? Let's give them name. Just just a. B, C, nothing, nothing fancy. A, B, C, D, E, and F. And now let's enumerate them. Let's enumerate them. Let's make a list of the triangles as we see them. The key here is to, is to go systematically. Go systematically, logically. Don't go all over the place haphazardly. Go systematically. So I'm going to start from from the left hand side. A, B, F. I see one triangle here. A, B, F. And immediately. And immediately we are going to take care of the mirror image of ABF. The mirror image of ABF is EDF. EDF. So that's taken care of. That pair is taken care of. Now let's go to this one here. ACF. 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 The mirror image is going to be ECF. ECF. There should be one more pair. There we go. BFC. BFC. B F C and the mirror image of B B F C is D F C D F C that's six so far and that's what you have in the second column is the answer C the answer is not C here there is one more triangle that we have to enumerate uh, there is one more triangle that we have to list there is one more triangle we need to account for and that triangle is the original triangle A C E A C E the the larger triangle in which everything is sitting. So altogether there are seven triangles, three pairs and one more. There are seven triangles versus six. Seven of course is more than six. Answer is A. Answer is A. Answer is A. Number five. Question number five. Okay, here we go. Question number five, and it appeared in the exam. These are very straightforward questions. 87% of the people had no trouble with it. Vast majority of the people had no trouble with it. Here is what it says. 3 raised to 4 versus 4 raised to 3. I'll give you two seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. As I said, it's a very straightforward question. Here we go. 3 raised to 4 is same as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And 4 is to 3 is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. 3 raised to 3 is 9. 9 raised to 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. And 27 times 3 is going to be 25 times 3 is 75. 27 is 2 more than 25. So 75 plus 6 is 81. And here we're going to have 64. 16 times 16 times 4 is 64. And 64 of course is less or less than. 64 is less than 81. The answer is A. Answer is A. That's all. Let's move on then. Let's do one more. Number six. Let's finish up the last. Let's finish up the last problem that appears in the first column, so that we can take care of the entire column in one shot. Number six. Here we go. Number six, we are given two equations. We are told that x plus k equals eight 
and we are told that x minus k, x minus k equals 4. Sounds good. And what we are being asked to compare is x versus k. Column A, column B. This is number 6. And 71% of the people, 71% of the people got this question right in the exam. About 3 tenths of the people missed it. I'm going to get out of your way. I insist that you pause the video, solve the problem yourself, always, every single problem, and then compare your work against the work that we are about to do together. Do you understand? Here we go. All right, here we go. If you recall, a couple of days ago, I believe it was day 449 or 448, we came across a similar problem. Where we, 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 where we encounter two equations. When we are given a pair of equations like these, these are called simultaneous equations. Simultaneous. Simultaneous equations. Why are they called simultaneous equations? They are called simultaneous equations because whatever value that we claim for x and whatever value that we claim for k has to satisfy both of the equations at the same time. The values of the x and k that we claim has to satisfy both of this equation simultaneously at the same time, hence the simultaneous equation. Now, what we learned two days ago when we did the problem, similar, to the similar problem to this one, what we learned in that question was that when we come across simultaneous equation in the exam, very rarely you have to solve for the value, value of each of the variable individually. In most cases, about 90% of the time, whatever it is that they're asking, whatever it is that they're asking can be gotten either by adding the two equations or by subtracting one equation from the other. That's what we're going to do here. Let's add the two equations, see what we get. When we add the, add the two equations, we get x, x plus x is 2x, positive k and a negative k is going to drop out, 8 plus 4 is 12, we find that 2x equals 12, therefore x equals 6. If x equals 6, we put it back in here, if x equals 6, then k would have to be 2, because 6 plus 2 equals 8. k would have to be 2. And therefore 2, we're comparing 6 versus 2, and therefore 6 is bigger, the answer is 8. That was question number 6. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.